There is a podcast about an island in the North Atlantic where people have been looking for an incredible treasure for more than 200 years. Hello, welcome back to Could It Be, an Oak Island podcast. We are your hosts, Deidre and Dustin White. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Well, it's been an exciting week. I'm using a word that apparently I use way too much. Uh, That's okay. It's a good word to use. Especially when I'm so excitable. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it was exciting this week. Our fun video we released. Oh, yes. I hope everybody got to check that out because we had way too much fun making it. Yeah, there was, uh, I think, last count, over 11,000 views of it. So I think everybody probably saw it once or twice. Yeah, that really exceeded my expectations. And (laughs) oh, my gosh, we were just laughing hysterically all the way through that. Who doesn't like Full House? I don't know. And we all like Oak Island. Uh, yeah, that's why we're here. Exactly. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun to make. And if you haven't seen it yet, go to Facebook or YouTube and just search like Oak Island and Full House, basically. <laughs> exactly. And it's uh, just an, it's like we made a new opening theme for the show. Yeah, it's a, it's an alternative, a little bit more chipper than the current opening. Yeah, well, the current opening is good too, though. We got some Robert Clotworthy in there. We do, but. I mean, this that was so good. Yeah. I mean, everybody's like turning their head <laughs> and, and laughing and, and having smiling. A good time. Oh, the one with Gary and he's like kissing the crossbow bolt or whatever it yeah. is and gives you a little wink. I mean, that's totally <laughs> perfect. Yeah, I think the breakout star was Billy. Oh my gosh. In the uh, excavator there. Billy's officially Gerhard. famous. Yeah. I know. He, he's uh, he's kind of a big deal on Reddit, right? He is. Okay. He is definitely a big deal on Reddit. And I just want to give a shout out to Reddit just right up front because I, I okay, neither Dustin and I have been really much into Reddit. We haven't had a am- ton of amazing experiences, but there's some good nuggets out there. And we happened to, Dustin said he was going to share that video on reddit i was like okay that seems like a weird place to share a video but i got on there and man that subreddit for curse of oak island that is the real treasure (laughs) wow i was reading through the ones from not this last episode but from the episode before Uh and i was just laughing hysterically on the couch i'm like you gotta hear this yeah (laughs) Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I didn't really look at much of that, but... Oh, man. Yeah. I got a good chuckle. There was a lot of great collaboration on ideas, and people were so nice to each other, and, like, building off of each... It, it was amazing. It was Sweet. a corner of the internet I had not seen. Well, that's wonderful. So, if anybody on Reddit listened to this, shout out to you guys. You're golden. <laughs> <laughs> Real top pocket find. <laughs> yeah, see, see what That's I did there. Good. You That's know, because everybody good. loves Gary, right? Well, yeah, duh. Duh. Well, I'm glad we did that fun little thing. Maybe look for some more cool stuff like that in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if we did one in the next month or so. Mm-hmm. But uh, before we get to recapping the show, I just want to give an update on our giveaway of the Curse of Oak Island book by Randall Sullivan. Yes. We've got about. Last time I checked, I think it was 175 entrants. And so, what are we up to now? No, that that is what we're up oh, to Oh, that's now. what we're up to now. Yeah. Got it. Because I think uh, last episode, I should have pulled that up, but we were at about 100. So mm-hmm. that's a pretty big jump in a week, considering it took us so long to get to 100 entries overall. Yeah, well, you still have just over two weeks to enter. Anyone that hasn't entered yet, please go to our Facebook page and click like on that specific post and share it, and you'll be entered in to win a free copy of the book, and we'll send it to you wherever you're at. Exactly. Even Antarctica. Yeah. And one other thing I want to touch on before we get to the show, we had a, a listener send us a message on Facebook Messenger mm-hmm. this past week, and I just want to read what he said. It's a fun little theory. This is from... Brant Moore, and he says, I have a theory. I have been watching religiously since the beginning, and I heard about Oak Island years before the show when it was a they did a three or four part story of it on Coast to Coast AM. 
It's a radio show. Now, I'm not sure. I know what AM is. <laughs> okay. Jeez. Now, I'm not sure if this has been brought up, but there was a episode where they went to on a tour of, of Marty's Vineyard. And one of the big buildings they took us through, they were happy to show us in the center was a big Templar cross in the middle of the hallway. And he was saying that he was so into the Templars that he wanted to add it to the structure. But this is a strange thing. If you're not a member of these societies, the Templars and Masons, you just don't use their symbols. I think uh, the, the brothers are Templars searching for the treasure. Their other members buried a long time ago. What do you think about that? Ooh, I've got all <laughs> kinds of thinkings. So, okay, wait a second. No, if they were Templars, they would not be cool with all this filming. Oh, first duh. off <laughs> and secondly i still love the idea yeah it's so funny. <laughs> we have a mason mm-hmm. we have a couple of templars maybe possibly supposedly uh we need a rosicrucian and now we need a viking <laughs> and they all walk in to a bar which bar the mug and anchor <laughs> to search through the spoils <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> to look for bone <laughs> yeah Okay, well, anyway, I thought that was a fun thing to uh, just give a shout out to Brant, Brant and talk about that fun theory. You know, it's it's a I love it. It's a funny thing to talk about. Hey, I'm I'm all about a good fun theory. I mean, we're here to have fun along the way, isn't that part of the treasure hunt, the yeah. journey? Well, we can just move right into another fun conspiracy theory involving. Mr. Charles Barkhouse. He's involved in all kinds of well, no, random things. The thing that, okay, so this now we're getting into the episode. So when we were watching it, you made note of Charles, like, okay, so they were oh, yeah. at the money pit mm-hmm. and it shows all the cans they put in. Mm-hmm. And where was Charles's can uh, compared to the rest of them? Okay. I can't take credit for this because oh, this, okay. I totally saw someone say this on that new golden world on the internet even though it's not new new to me uh called reddit someone had mentioned did you notice that charles can that he put down is the furthest away from the (laughs) actual location than anybody else's yeah i totally lost it there and told yep i'm on board it's good i love it charles is trying to keep the mason secret safe again I guess so. He's like, what is plausible that I'm still within their range and they'll think I'm actually trying? (laughs) (laughs) And then he chooses his way over there. Mr. C1, watching you. Hey, I I trust him. You trust him to lead you away from the treasure? Nah, I think he was trying to do it, trying to find it. Mm, Fine. Yeah. But it was funny when you mentioned that. <laughs> That's an amazing thing. I like it. <laughs> it's good. It's fun, if nothing else. It's all about the diversion. It's the <laughs> bait and switch. I love it. Well, Charles seemed excited for them to pull up the H8 can. That's true. And retry that area. So he's not against being closer to the money pit or the suspected site of the money pit the suspected site well what did marty say this episode he was pretty sure no very sure pretty confident that h8 is in the money like the original money pit area he's he feels really confident about that and so they're gonna pull the can back up a little bit to Mm -hmm. try to get whatever got pushed out of the way to kind of shimmy back in the hole Mm-hmm. So they did a hammer grab to pull out the silt and settle- sediment that has settled in there over the year mm-hmm. after the winter and all that good stuff. Yeah, that sludge looked pretty nasty. The the blue clay. Yeah, the... I don't know what it was, but... But Rick sticks Rick his was, hand yeah, right in Rick, it. Rick was willing to go right for it. He like pulls it up and it's this gross looking putty. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. That was... I was expecting to throw it at his brother or something. I really thought there was going to be a clay fight right there. Yeah. There wasn't. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Uh, well, I was a little disappointed. Yeah, it's probably for the best. So, anyways, they did a... They pulled that up, and now they're doing that slowly but surely shimmy out. And we're seeing them start to pull it up, and then they end the episode. Wah, wah. Yeah, well, 
You got to end somewhere. You can't have everything in one episode. No, but I felt like maybe we were going to see like them at least pull one thing and they'd give like a little teaser as to what it was that came out of there. Meh. And I guess we just have to wait till the next yeah. episode. Hopefully they pull it out. Oh, yeah. They'll get to show us some cool stuff out oh. of H8, I'm sure, next time. But anyway, that was jumping to the end. Yeah, apparently we're working backwards today. So if well, we're... That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We just... It, it flowed good, you know, from one conspiracy theory to Charles <laughs> to... Let's talk about H8. Conspiracy theories. Mr. P-Man. Tori. <laughs> gyroscope. How did he get invited to the war room? Did he call a meeting? <laughs> well, he's part of the team now, apparently. Oh, gosh. Guys, I need to call a war room meeting. Let me in. Well, you just have to go... Uh... I have to go pee in the woods? <laughs> yeah, and find some that's random That's just rock. rude. <laughs> rude okay i must ask you because mm -hmm. you asked me last time what i thought the stone was what do you think the stone is now that they've scanned it and have results back i don't know uh, it, it looks like a lot of runic type of script that i've seen in the past but some of those lines are just like straight lines and you know this is, i think there's like three or four straight lines just right in, all next to each other and that doesn't look like anything but a straight line. It's been exposed to the elements. Let's say it's been sitting in that spot for, you know, four or 500 years or a thousand years or whatever. You know, Vikings was a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. But let's say it was sitting out there the whole time. You know, it's been rained on. It's been snowed on. It's been wind. Uh, you know, it's wind been eroded. On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been winded on. Okay. <laughs> so it's been exposed to the elements and maybe some of that stuff kind of like the 90 foot stone got wiped away from history okay 90 foot stone was hammers and leather like you can't it's not the same but if that has just been sitting there i i don't know i don't know how i feel about it i'm leaning towards right now caveman learning to <laughs> carve for the first time like this is somebody's school wow. like homework ice age you know what at this point we're throwing in the vikings <laughs> we're throwing in all all the things yeah next they're gonna find woolly mammoth bones down in the bottom h8 aren't we it, it, they might hmm. you know i feel like it's in the spirit of all those geico commercials they're running right now <laughs> you know it's like the throwback to the cavemen that's you know, offended by things. <laughs> that, those are pretty good. Yeah. Anyways, I feel like it's someone's homework. They're learning to carve, and obviously they're not super great at it. Uh, what? What are you talking about? Those were nice straight. Yeah, lines they were straight and... lines, but they're they're just learning the pattern, and yeah. they're not getting all the lines on there. Hey, they made that portion of the rock super smooth and flat. Yeah, the teacher probably made it that way with like leather and a hammer and then gave it to him to write on mm. with a chisel okay well i'm more impressed with it than you are i guess i don't know i i'm i'm excited to see what they what comes of it i hope it's some kind of cool viking artifact but i don't know well it could still be part of the ten commandments <laughs> if we're gonna go there sure that's even older <laughs> i know <laughs> a lot older well rick also said when they were talking about it it appears that it's a part of something else. Like it's been broken or dropped yeah. or whatever it is. And then if you take a screenshot and when they get those close up looks, there's another rock right there, guys. <laughs> I saw it. Guess what? They were right there. They were standing right there looking at it. They know. They're, right? No, they don't. <laughs> they do. How many times have they walked by this stone? Probably to pee themselves and they didn't see it. They probably less left the, the broken piece of the artifact there. Possibly. I don't buy it. Okay, well, just because you don't buy it doesn't mean I don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, f fine then. But yeah, so we got the results back from Azmuth, some lines, and then we see, who is it? It's Paul and Alex have to take a 140-mile trip. trip and that's to... a cool road trip. I'd go on a road trip with those guys. Okay, 140 miles to look at a stone you could have seen on the internet to know it does not look like the same writing. Okay. They they did see it on the internet. Guarantee it. <laughs> I know. That's my point. So why? Because it's good to have a 
go to a location and touch the physical stone. Why wouldn't you do that? It's not that far away. 140 miles to like it's not touch that big it of a deal. and run around and come back. I yeah. I don't know. I feel like that time could have been better used Doing researching. What? Like maybe finding some more hidden hidden hey. documents because apparently he already knew everything. Hey. What? What do you think they were doing? Researching. Okay. They looked at the stone, said this doesn't match, and okay. they left. <laughs> that they is some, all. They got some intel from the people that work there. Nothing that they didn't already know. <laughs> but it was Paul's breakout episode. This is the I, most I, we've heard sure? him. Yes. I think it was Alex Lagina's breakout episode for this season. He okay. was in all of this. He, he was almost in every scene. Okay. After but that, anyway. Alex has been around a while. Yeah. And Paul, we have not heard him talk that much before. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good to get good to get him some screen time. I I agree. He deserves it. I want to. All these guys well, that do all this research deserve it. Well, we want to know if he it. deserves it, no, right? Know, yeah, he deserves we it. We want to see what he's done, what he knows. So kind of put him to work here. I like that. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm a big fan. And yes, there was a lot of Alex going on. Like when he got back, he had to check in on everything. Did you notice that? Yeah. He First did. thing, he was like, "Bam, money pit." <laughs> Bam, Miss Cope, what's going on, guys? And And they're like, here, take this shovel. And please quit asking questions and keep digging. Because that's what he just kept asking them questions. Hey, that's good. He was the voice of the audience. Okay, but they kept looking at him like, dude, just dig. There's this big thing here. Quit asking me where it's coming from. I I don't know any more than you do. Well, he was being the voice of the audience. He was asking the questions I wanted to have the answers to. Even if they didn't have the answers to him. Was he really? Yeah, he was. Mm-hmm. You and I have different questions, I've decided. <laughs> I have more questions. Hey, they didn't show every question that he asked them either. You so. don't know that. <laughs> you can't see through the lens back at them. Okay. I'm just saying. I have more questions too, okay? Okay. Is, isn't that just typical Oak Island? Sure. More questions than answers? Yes. Yes? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So Smith's Cove, we spent a lot of time in there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Lots of cool stuff going on. We had a L-shaped structure. Yeah. Yeah. We got to the L. Yep. And it looked a lot different than the U-shaped structure. Yes. It looked like an L instead of a U. Well, I mean, the pieces of wood look a lot different. It's not built with, like, logs. You know, it's built with, like... You know, Re- really? Because it was all built with logs. The L-shaped structure? It's all loggy. Well, it's like cut wood, though. You know, it's like... Cut wood? <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. Go I ahead. I think they said it was two two by eight pieces of boards that it was cut off. Are you talking about the like the mini walls we're yeah, finding that's everywhere? Yeah, the structure. Okay. To me, it just looks like a bunch of little pony walls everywhere. Yeah. I don't understand. And it's even like Rick says, so why, why if this is supposedly a damn... It doesn't make sense because water would just come around it mm-hmm. the other way. And then he said, asks, you know, about the Hedden Wharf, which apparently Hedden built his wharf on top of something and something we've never seen before. Something that even Hedden never seen before, apparently. He didn't know what it was. Most <laughs> likely. And he was just like, hmm, there's probably something sturdy here. Yeah. Well, it feels sturdy. Let's just build into that. Not What is that? Yeah. Hey, you know what was funny, though? When... Rick was talking to Craig about that. Mm-hmm. He was saying, he was like pointing out the L-shaped structure. He was he pointed out the U-shaped structure. Then he pointed out Billy's wall. That's right. That I awesome? forgot. Billy's Hashtag got Billy's wall. <laughs> so I'm excited because Billy's a big deal now, right? Yeah. One I of mean, my favorite characters this season. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> has surgical precision in that thing. Well, hence why he made it into our video. Like, he's a big deal now. Yeah. Billy's wall. He actually called it Billy's wall. He did. And w- I think we both looked at each other when that was Aaron was like, did he just say Billy's wall? It's it's the, almost the equivalent of a Drayton's cross. <laughs> it is. So we have Billy's wall, Drayton's cross, and Pea Stone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. You're taking it too far now. You're taking it too far. So Laird and Terry are digging out. Yeah, it's kind of lots of Laird and Terry, huh? Yeah, a lot of the twins. <laughs> so were they digging out the L? I'm trying to think. If 
remember if they were digging out the L structure or Billy's wall or both. I think they were focusing mostly on the L shaped structure. And, okay. Yeah, trying to figure out where it went and what it know. is. There's a lot of questions. We we don't have answers to that stuff right now, so Well poor Laird, um Rick keeps asking, Well, what do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Is this belong to this? And He's like, well, at first I thought it was Searcher and original, and I just, I, I don't know. No, he, he said, what did he say? He said, now I'm not sure. Yeah, now I'm not sure, but Rick was like, oh, really? He got all excited yeah. about it. Yeah, that was, hey. That felt like Laird saying, I, I just don't know anymore. This place is weird. <laughs> well, it's nothing like he's ever seen excavated in Nova Scotia before, so. Also a true statement. It is a unique place. No doubt. Yeah, uh, that was fun. We also got to see some Gary. We did, very... It was pretty brief, which is Mm. unfortunate, because that guy deserves a lot more airtime. Well, he's... He he does deserve his own show, remember? He does. And guess what I did? Did you go sign the petition? I sure did. Yeah! Yeah! Go Gary! Everybody else should, too. I don't know that it's actually going to do anything. Yeah, probably. Or like not. I said, if he even wants a show. <laughs> but he needs to know the support is there. Yeah. Truly. Well, he did find something else with lead. Mm-hmm. Some kind of bracelet, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, you know, he got excited about it, showed it to Laird, <laughs> and then Laird was like, oh, well, that's pretty neat. And then he's like, hey, look, there's like pattern or like mm-hmm. intricate design on there, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, I want to see. <laughs> and they never ever give us a close-up of whatever this supposed design is. Okay. Yeah. And Laird's like, sure. He's super unexcited about it. He think uh, my bet no. is. No. Yes. That's compared how... to Gary, you mm-hmm. put Laird and Gary next to each other looking at a bracelet or not a bracelet. He's like, yeah. And Gary's like, like trying to hold <laughs> his excitement back. Yeah. Well, he's excited. He found something cool. Laird didn't find that cool thing, okay? That's true. But I think Laird's excited about it. He just shows it in a different way. He doesn't get all woo, 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 woo. You know, that's not his style. How does he show it? He says, oh, that's interesting. You know, that's like, (laughs) that's how he gets excited. (laughs) No, I'm a big fan of Laird. I I believe that any team you work with, it takes all types, but you... (laughs) What I loved was the two of them right next to each other, and they're so different from each other. Yep. Just 100%. So different. It's just hilarious. But they're hilarious. They they have similarities too. They They do. They both love history. They both love digging in the dirt, (laughs) finding cool things. They they actually have more in common than you probably think. No, I think they have a lot in common. (laughs) It's just the way, like you said, they react to things differently. And what, what, did gary say about i don't know if this is a whatever moment a woohoo uh, moment or a <laughs> holy shimoli a holy shimoli moment you that? sorry i don't know how if this is a whole i know how dare i not know oh well i think i will be forgiven and if i am not i will have to get over it yeah i might survive i don't know anyways L-shaped structure, and then what about all those logs that they uncover? The slipway? Potentially a slipway. Something they would slide a boat back down into the water on or something? Or a big load of some kind, and they're speculating. Oh, no. Wasn't that we were saying was on the diagram? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. The diagram had less pieces of... Like, like it didn't logs. show logs like right next to each other mm-hmm. and it also had the roman numerals and you know you're not, we're not seeing no roman numerals under all those logs stacked you know one right after another mm-hmm. so i don't i think that's probably different i don't know like i said before the picture that we saw of the diagram said like item number 10 mm-hmm. and i really want to know where the other nine pages are i get this feeling Hedden, Hedden probably found a lot, especially now that we are just now hearing of this, those, what, the two, like, timbers coming out of the rock 
mm-hmm. at low tide and he had said it was potentially like a, a slipway or a place to tie up. I'm like, okay, yeah, never heard of that before. I feel like maybe I need to start digging into some uh, head in documents. It might not be a bad idea. Yeah, I went to the Chester Society's like online page. They don't have any digital archived nothing. Boo. I know, I was really bummed. Well, it's okay to just wait for the cool things to show up on TV and talk about them that way. I don't know. I, I, I know. I did some back re- background research, too, on the 90-foot stone and whatnot. And it's fun to, to read about. It helps my speculating. Yeah. I hear you. I don't know. I, I, I just, with all our recapping, I feel like maybe there was some time to throw in there about some of these things that Hedden found. <laughs> Side note, Hedden. Mm-hmm. You see that picture they keep putting up of him on the screen? Mm-hmm. I don't, it seems oddly sharp and crystal clear for something that was a picture that was taken in like the 30s, doesn't it? <laughs> like it's taken in the yeah it, yeah. It's, I don't know. Maybe it was in the 40s or 50s. I was I, gonna I say know, I think it was it, later th- than that. I don't know when he died, but he worked Oak Island in the 1930s, and. That picture they keep showing is in color and it's like crystal clear and it looks like someone, you know, went and snapped that photo, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, you know, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, well, the picture could have been taken. It's easy to add color. That was actually used to be a really popular thing where you go back into images, even if they weren't taken in color and Mm. add them in. I did a whole thing in art college on it. But they probably, you know, you scan it in. It's not too hard to retouch and clean up some of that i did yeah. that in i don't know. know i just think they got a really good picture of that guy well that's probably <laughs> why they keep showing it <laughs> probably it, like it's, it's a lot a... clearer than a lot of the grainy dan blankenship photos you know well and they've definitely got their like sepia tone filter over it and all that good stuff every time they show it so yeah. and it's not like they show it for an extended period of time that's true it's just something that I, something i noted it's for just something you noted. We may have gone a little too in depth about a picture that actually has nothing to do about the workings on Oak Island. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, my bad. Whoops. Okay. What else did we have go on this episode? I had some commercial breaks. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> so, what about in the war room? Doug mentions. A friend had introduced him to Futar, which is a <laughs> runic language. That, that sounds made up. It totally <laughs> sounds made up. I should have done some research on Futar, what it is, what I, it looks like. I didn't know it was called that, but I've seen script like this a lot doing research for other treasure hunts. You know, <laughs> well, so, that's but I, it, it, it may be a different kind of similar script, not that. Yeah, it's probably a variation on yeah. it. You can't expect them from all over the world to sync up their their different languages when writing. Most of them are pictograms, but I I know nothing of Futar. <laughs> but they've really dove into this idea of the Vikings joining the party. Oh, you know more than you're letting on then. What? <laughs> you said you know nothing about it, but then you go into... Telling us that it's a Viking language. Well, oh, give me a break. <laughs> so. You know what Doug told you anyway. <laughs> I know what Doug told me. I know what Robert Clotworthy told me. Okay. That in Canada, Nova Scotia, there's other potential Viking settlement set, <laughs> settlements, potentially. Yep. Apparently, Leif Erikson. Mm-hmm came over in around 1000 AD mm-hmm. and did some exploring in North America. Okay, how long has this thing been hidden? Because I'm starting to <laughs> feel like with our nesting doll of cofferdams going on here at Smith's Cove, that this legend has been around longer <laughs> than maybe we anticipated. If- okay, the Vikings probably didn't bury something 200 feet deep on no, oak island i'm talking about them as searchers because if this oak island legend has been around 
maybe longer than we anticipated. If the Vikings are joining the party, <laughs> and we've got Romans joining the party, we've got us some Templars, we've got mm. us some Masons, we got us. Yeah, they do have the uh, concrete walls that they find in the next episode for next time on Oak Island where they're talking about, well, the Romans had concrete. Okay, concrete has been around for a very long time. Gary finds that thing that he thought was part of a weapon, right? Yes. And it looks a lot like that uh, supposed Roman pylum. You mean the crossbow bolt? Exactly. (laughs) 2.0? 2.0. Maybe it's like the other prong for King Triton's thing. Sure. Yeah? Probably not. Under the sea? I don't think so. No? Okay. You're no fun. My bad. Yeah, I know. You should have more fun. That that's what life is about. Have fun. Maybe find some. I have concrete. lots of fun. I don't know what you're talking about. No, let's talk about concrete. Okay. Okay. So it could have been concrete from, let's say, original. Okay. But it could also have been, head in, throwing some concrete pilings in, for his wharf or something. Yeah. Right. Sure. Could be. Could it be? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. So we wait, we get a hint of that, but we don't get any idea of something coming out of the money pit next episode. Well, that's with, kind of concerning to nah, me. The way things have been going lately is they do a whole bunch of Smith's Cove and then they touch on a little couple other things at, toward the end of the episode. And so next week, what they'll probably do is do a lot of more Smith's Cove and have the last like five to seven minutes completing the hammer grabs out of the H8 and just starting to move that caisson back up. Yes. That's my prediction. Well, okay, so we did, I guess we didn't see anything come out, but they did throw that sonar down into the money pit, and you and I had a mini debate about it earlier in the week of what a 90-degree angle is. Oh, (laughs) Yeah, okay, they did have that in the in the preview, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, that that didn't look like a 90 degree angle. It is to me. close enough to a <laughs> 90 for sonar to be able to consider it this It was it was close, but it wasn't vault. quite 90 90. It's degrees. 90 enough to be <laughs> what we th- what they think was pushed aside. I love that graphic where they show, you know, pulling up the case on and mm-hmm. the vault like falling back into place. <laughs> so, if we go off that bizarre theory then it's definitely a 90 degree angle from the vault sliding back into place and the center looks like a giant eye yeah did you see i think it was somewhere on facebook i believe in one of the groups somebody had zoomed in to that kind of right you know the Mm -hmm. almost right angle and saw like a face in there and then they zoomed in again and the face got clearer and they zoomed in again, and the face got clearer, and they zoomed in one more time, and it was Charles Barkas's face. <laughs> <laughs> I did not you didn't see, see that. that. Oh, oh man, that was man. pretty good. You need to, yeah, I'll have to show that to you oh, after the show. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> and it actually, like, it w- <laughs> just the image alone, I could almost make out Charles's face in this image. It's really good. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, look that up. That's, that was oh, really man. funny. Oh, man, all I saw was, like, the eye from... Lord of the Rings, where they're supposed to like throw the ring into. How would you How would you know what that is? You've never even seen Lord of the Rings. I've seen it and it was horrible. Yes, I know. I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying that. Best movie of all time. Okay, longest journey ever, and nothing is accomplished. Oh my gosh, I don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah, uh, uh, you. Uh, uh, okay, so which one of the, which the movie did you see? Whatever the second one, the something about a couple of towers. Okay. <laughs> and then I saw... So you didn't see the, the first one. Okay, whatever. And, and you didn't see the third one. Whatever. Yeah. I did see that other one, The Hobbit, and they go on a journey, and I, because I told you I would see it, and I did. That one and they just, great, no, it, you're right, it wasn't good <laughs> at all. And they just journey and journey, and then they don't even get to where they're going. You're like, because this is only part one or whatever. I was like, oh, no, no. No. Those little legs are going to fall off. Too much journeying. Well, it's only the best movie of all time, so you should really give it a chance. That's all i got to say about that. 
I did. And now the eyeball is at the bottom of the money pit. <laughs> and if you throw the ring in it, we will have gold. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. You don't even know. You, come on. That's just, all I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just jealous because you don't know what a 90 degree angle is. Mm. Or you can't accept that it might be a 90 degree or a box that's slightly askew. It's fairly close. It's askew. Mm. And it could be nature doesn't make those kinds of shapes. I'm trying to find that picture. It's really good. What, of Charles? Yeah, to show you. Okay. Money pit. What about the money pit? We already talked about the 90 degree angle. Ooh, so on the next week, we also see Gary finds a coin. And we already talked about the other sharp object he found, but he finds a coin. Hey, wait a second. Look at this real quick. Oh, what? <laughs> Look at this piece in the corner. All right, stare hard at that little blob in the corner there. On the In the corner, okay. Yeah, that's kind of protruding to the outside. And tell okay. me that's not Charles Barkhouse's face. I don't see his face. <laughs> <laughs> it okay come bring it back it is i see like okay wait wait wait, wait. i see at least a skull um <laughs> i do see some someone wearing some shades <laughs> wow i see something there i can i am not convinced it's okay, okay. i'm kind of convinced it's charles but not really i'll find the one where it zooms out <laughs> anyways next week on what kind of coin does Gary find? He finds a coin? They they show him metal detecting next week. Yeah. And he's got something, and I believe Rick says, is that a coin? But they're insinuating it's a coin. Okay. But I kind of thought it would look like a penny. I must have missed that part. Sorry. Were you not paying? <sighs> You're fired. <laughs> you're fired sorry guys from now on it's just me i apologize i know we will now lose 50 percent of our audience <laughs> oh okay so in smith's cove i wanted to chat about this wait a second oh. i found it <laughs> look at this oh my god that is not what you showed me <laughs> yeah but that's what i'm showing you now okay but now i see it <laughs> wow See, wow. it's Charles's face, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a sec. Does Charles have an evil twin? At the bottom of the money pit. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. That was pretty good. I'll wow. take a screenshot of this and put it on our uh, Facebook page. Oh, man. <laughs> That's funny stuff. Pretty I'm funny. sure you can just share it. You know, the okay. guy probably wants credit well i'll put it it's from joseph gilbert and i will put this on our page somehow that's funny yes. <laughs> you well for those who don't know because we've had some people asking if we could start a group so we like connected a group to the podcast facebook page i think it's just me and dustin hanging out in there and i had like two other people that requested so it's a little boring right now and we need some people to help liven it up yeah so come join our facebook group that'll be fun i don't know if you guys want to chat that's probably where if we put out any more fun videos like the full house video that's probably where it'll end up first before it goes to the page yep or if we have special things we need to ask or feedback on our episodes if you want to speculate back yeah well we love feedback i i, I always get real excited every time we see somebody giving us a review or giving us you know sending us a message in facebook messenger or email or whatever so yeah it totally makes it's so day. much fun yeah i mean even if it is you know constructive criticism i would say we've gotten better thanks to the feedback i think so why am i talking i thought i was fired you i unfired you oh, okay it was a temporary um firing so you were on suspension you are now back wow two minutes yep Yep, and were, I talked all the way through it. You did. Yeah. Sounds sounds like you. I get a feeling as a kid that's probably what you did. Probably talk through your timeout. Yeah. No. Maybe. Maybe could it be? Maybe. 
So We're, I had something I wanted to talk about, and then you interrupted me. My bad. Rude. Now I don't remember. Oh, okay. Smith's Cove. They were Going talk- back? Yeah, I, I want to go back to Smith's Cove real quick. Okay. So who, I think it was Rick. Yeah, Rick and Laird talking about the fact that they're, they weren't finding metal fasteners at yeah. all. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that that's what they were expecting. In my head, no metal fasteners were going to come up. I don't know. What about you? A construction like that, if it's recent, you would expect there to be some kind of something metal holding it together. Exactly. That's not, un- that's not unreasonable. Yes, but I didn't think it was anything newer. Well, even if it was the 1800s, probably 1700s, they'd probably have some sort of metal fastener or like big nails or, you know, those big nails they've been pulling out of the ground I, everywhere. I was going to say, what about all those like giant spikes they keep pulling out? Well, you would expect them to be using something like that. I know those are probably for ships, but, you know, maybe something similar, smaller, to hold these things together, but it's all done with wooden pegs place of said nails. Yeah, I guess that's true. I also kept coming up with the idea, well, the thought that whatever head in belt, Mm -hmm. I thought would have something metal. Yeah, you would figure. And then we see Mm -hmm. Billy, you know, surgically uncovering things. That's what he does. And in this giant, like, rope or cord, (laughs) like, pops up and... And nobody cares? Nobody cares. <laughs> like, is it a metal cord? Is it a rope? Is it... Everyone's like, just ignore that. Okay, maybe it was from something earlier, but... Maybe yeah, it was Maybe it was from them. That That's what I mean. It may have been them, but maybe someone should have just said, oh, yeah, our rope, or... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Instead, they're like, oh, look, wood. Yep. Not excited about the rope whatsoever. Is it a rope or it looked like... It might like, have been cable. But. Yeah, I actually got excited when I saw it like pop up out of there. I was like, ooh. I was like, too. oh, cool. And they don't even look at it. <laughs> it's probably just a rope that they tied to something to try to... I don't know. It's all speculation, but... Isn't it, that what know. we do? It is what we do. Okay, so you have... Maybe it's Billy's rope <laughs> to go with Billy's wall. Which one is Billy's wall? Is that the one that Rick broke? No. No, because that would have been Rick's wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Billy's wall is, prob- is the one that they first found. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy's wall. Never tell you you're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> he really is a breakout star. Yeah. I think this would be a good time for us to chat about our clotworthy moments of this week and last week, of course. Yeah, let's touch on last week first and reveal the results of the clotworthy moment that featured our first time of having three options three clotworthy options Ooh, i wonder who Mm -hmm. won well it was an attempt to try to make it so that a landslide victory would not happen remember i do remember that so what do you think happened I'm going with landslide victory. There was a landslide victory. (laughs) Oh, man. Receiving 76% of the vote was... A triangle-shaped opening. That was the winner. Okay. I mean, it was good. It was good. No, there was someone that posed a really valid point here. What's that? Was that this is really a challenge because if you listen to the podcast and listen to the different clips then a diagram would surely win but i don't know about that hey hold on hold up if if you were just reading this then of course a triangle shaped opening Hmm. so you know just based off of what you're reading versus if you're thinking about what it sounds like you know, I, I'm curious to know how people select their clot-worthy moments. Well, they listen to the episode, then they go to Twitter and vote on which one they like that's, the best. That's what they should do. But, you know, it's very possible they're not considering mm. the tone of voice. That's important. Sure. Okay, it's not important for everybody. It's point important for me. Okay. Well, we have a winner this week. It was a triangle-shaped <laughs> opening. Yeah, And that yes. was a very fun 
It is. It is. moment. Because they went from boxes to triangles. Exactly. This week, we are going to switch it back to two clockworthy moments because the other thing didn't work. Yes, because three did not make a help. Make Who says that? Because <laughs> three did not help. Make, no, it didn't make a help. <laughs> it didn't make a help. So we're going to go back to just two. Yep. So what kind of clockworthy moments do we have this week? All right. Let me pull them up. The first one is... The L-shaped structure. That's a good one. It's right to the point, isn't it? Yes. And it is exactly what he's saying it is. An L next Shaped to structure. the U. Lou. Lou. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is the second one? Runic carvings on Oak Island. It's all about the runic carvings on Oak Island. Or is it? On Oak Island. Could it be? Yeah, that one's... That the Vikings? <laughs> it could be. It could be. I guess. Yeah, those are good ones. I'm excited to see if one if destroys we have another, the other. <laughs> yeah, if we have another landslide victory, then maybe that just means that I'm really not so great at picking the clot-worthy moments. Well, what else can it be? You know, it could, is it just going to be some, like when he's describing uh, the swamp or Just random, whatever? just little pieces. Wait a second. They haven't talked about the swamp at all this year. Yeah, so, so they... that probably won't be part of it. <laughs> when is the swamp coming? It's got to be coming. Know. Come on, guys. It's got to be coming. Before you know it. I know. I wasn't super excited about it. Now I'm excited about it. Or what about the area that Laird started digging with all the rocks? They'll come back to it. Is Laird the only one allowed to dig there? Are they going to like flash back over there and it's already completely uncovered because <laughs> he's had like a team out there working on it? Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe. Could it be? It could be. Mm, perhaps. Perhaps. That's exciting. Yeah. So before we get to the end of the show, we should probably read an iTunes review. Should we tell them... How to vote for the Clotworthy Moment? Oh. You can vote for the Clotworthy Moment by going to Twitter and visiting our Twitter page. Is it not a Twitter page? <laughs> That's what people that only use Facebook would say. So you can find us on Twitter with the handle <laughs> at Oak Island Pod. See how hip I sounded there? Cause I... You sounded really a lot better than I did. Yes, but, yes, but hey, you're an old man. I'm the I'm the one that that actually posts the clotworthy moments and stuff on Twitter. Yeah, but so who uses Twitter around here? Not you. I use it. I've shared a couple things. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. Yeah, I I'm I'm the IG gal. Hmm. So yeah. That not, being I, said, what is that? Is that Instagram? <laughs> yeah. What is that? Did you I am do you not hear into this? Instagram. Do you hear what I, I live can't with? Do it. He. It's because he refuses to learn anything new. So if you want to know who you're <laughs> interacting with on each side of the platforms, we both take care of our Facebook page, which is at Oak Island Podcast. I take care of the good old IG, aka Instagram, at Oak Island Podcast. <laughs> And Dustin tends to man the Twitter universe, Twitterverse, even though he thinks we have a page. <laughs> and, and that is at Oak Island Pod. I'm just saying. Whatever. We got a couple retweets hey. from like Robert Clotworthy that's and right. stuff. That's right. So now that's, what? that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm way cooler than you, okay? You are not. You are not. You should follow Instagram because Gary Drayton is hilarious. He posts there. the same stuff on Facebook. No, he does not. Just because they've joined and like hold hands, like I've face. seen his funny okay. stuff. It's great. He has a lot Especially, of funny did stuff. Did you see the one with all the khaki wearing icons? Oh, yeah. He's in the he's in the icon club with khaki guys like Crocodile Dundee, <laughs> it's Steve Irwin. Yes. Who was the other one? Oh, uh, geez, who is the other one? I don't know, but I know one of them's Gary. Yeah, so that was really funny. Is is it Indiana? No. No. I don't know. I don't know, but it did answer my question as to why everybody wears khakis on the island. 
There's nothing wrong with khakis at all. I like khakis. Well, they get dirty. Yeah. So there's that problem. But apparently that's what adventurers wear. Yeah, pretty much. So now that that's taken care of. Yeah, that's what Josh Gates wears, right? That is what Josh Gates wears. And a hat. And a hat. I have an adventuring hat, but I think my head might be too big for it. <laughs> but I feel like maybe I should take a picture of me adventuring in it and put it up on the Instagram. Sure. And be like, what up? I'm an adventurer. Yeah? Sure. Sure? Are you really an adventurer if you have to call yourself an adventurer? I think that makes me more an adventurer. I think other people have to call you an adventurer for it to be true. Okay, everybody. You should just call me an adventurer from now on. Okay. All right, so... (laughs) Not really. They probably want us to start wrapping up the show. Yeah, they're probably way tired of us. Nah. So let's go ahead and read an iTunes review. Yes. You're going to read it this month. Or week. Just this month? (laughs) Is this my one for the month? I guess it is a short month. It is a short month. Okay. I'm going to read this lovely one by Field753. Love the podcast. And if Dustin has to read this out loud, then... Dot, dot, dot. I just want to say, Deidre is always right, and I'll do whatever she says. Thanks to you both. First off, that was mean. You should have read that one. <laughs> and you, so you will do whatever I say. I don't think so. You're the one that said that, not me. Well, I will do whatever I say <laughs> because I am Deidre. <laughs> so there's that. But this person is on my side and thinks you should do whatever I say. Well, I don't quite agree, but... You you they... always say if you would just listen to me, then it would have been much easier the first time. So this person must truly understand our relationship. Yeah, okay. <laughs> See, he will not do what I say the first time. I have better ideas a lot See, of times. See, that's not true. <laughs> I'm here to help crush dreams and whose dreams mine sure if (laughs) that's what whatever it takes okay i'm here to help isn't that a a fun review that that's an amazing review that's definitely one of my favorites (laughs) it's right on up there well good glad you liked it thank you thank you field yeah if that's your real name (laughs) so i want to read one facebook one facebook review i like the facebook reviews those are good too do you want to read it nope okay. i already read mine for the month <laughs> it's a it's from sadie decker and it says i stumbled onto this podcast on spotify the hubs and i are long time the curse of oak island fans i love this podcast because the hosts talk about different uh, viewpoints or angles that we have never considered i look forward to the new one every week great job you guys side note I love randomly saying manganese (laughs) with a questioning tone and furrowed brow to my teenagers. (laughs) They are sick of it, and that's why we'll continue to do it. (laughs) That is amazing. Isn't that great? (laughs) Thank you, Sadie. That is just, that made our week. That was a great one. Manganese. Manganese. I'm giving you a furrowed brow right now. (laughs) Who? Me? No, Sadie, and you. (laughs) It makes me part of the club. Okay. (laughs) Oh, I cheer you on. You annoy your teenagers. You go for it. Yeah. Oh, that's what parents are supposed to do. Oh, yeah, that's that's the joy. Yep, so you already told everybody where they can contact us. I sure did. I think we're at the very end. You got any, are you doing anything fun this week? Any? I'm going to be working. Yeah, and any treasure hunting? Maybe. Lots of research, right? Yeah, it's mostly going to be a research document prep week. Yeah, a lot a lot of research. I'm feeling like it's going to be a nose in the book week. Mm-hmm. Well, that's always fun. It is. I enjoy doing the research. See, that's why I get along good with Doug and Paul. But would you drive 140 miles to see a stone you could see on the internet? Yes, if I was on the TV show getting paid to be on the TV show, I'd do whatever they want me to do. I don't care. I don't believe you. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I can't even get you down to the Historical Society to see the Portland Treasure Chart. Eh. That's across the river. That's like not even through the woods, just across the river. Okay. Maybe someday. Okay. I'm going to find something 140 miles away for research and see if you'll go. That's like Seattle. Yeah. 
We used to live up there, and we never went to the Space Needle together. Meh. Saw it every day. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. No, you did not. Every time I drove to work, I could see it. No, because it's not the tallest building in Seattle, like everybody thinks. <laughs> I saw it every single day when I drove to work. He saw it because it was on the news in the morning. No. Part of the skyline. Well, until next time. Could it be? I don't know if this is an Oli Shamoli find just yet.